In this video, we're going to talk about prime factorization. But before we get to that, we first need to talk about what a factor is. When we talk about factors of a number, we're talking about the numbers that will divide evenly into the given number with no remainder. So when I look at the factors for 12, the easiest way to find the factors is to write down the multiplication facts that give me 12. 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. So when I write them in order, I would write 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. You can always tell if you have all the numbers if you can pair them up with a partner. Now let's look at the factors of 36. I've got 1 times 36, 2 times 18, 3 times 12, 4 times 9, and 6 times 6. So when I write the list of factors in order, I would say 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Now don't write 6 twice, just write it once. And then 9, 12, 18, and 36. When I check for the partners, they're all there, and you're going to notice that 6 doesn't have a partner. Well, if there's a number without a partner, that just means it's 6 times 6. So there are the, all the factors of 36. Now we're going to take a look at prime factorization. First of all, remember this word prime and what it means. A number is prime if the only factors are 1 and itself. For example, if I write down the factors of 3, the only numbers I get are 1 and 3. The factors of 5 are 1 and 5. The factors of 7 are 1 and 7. Now, there are many prime numbers. The smallest one is the number 2. It's the smallest and it's the only even prime number. So the prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, and so forth. So when we do prime factorization, we're going to want to end up with prime numbers. If you remember, numbers that are not prime are called composite. The composite numbers are composed of other numbers. So examples of a composite number would be the number 6, because 6 is composed of the factors 2 and 3, not just 1 and 6. So here I have the factors 1, 2, 3, and 6. Because it has more factors than just 1 and itself, it's considered a composite number. So let's look at the prime factorization of the number 12. Here's how we do it. We use branching, and I know that 3 times 4 gives me 12. 3 is a prime number, so I'm going to bring that down to the bottom, and then 4 can be broken down into 2 times 2. So when we write the prime factorization answer, we write it down in order from least to greatest. Now, if there are repeated factors like there are here, I've got two twos, so I can write two and then a little exponent and then times three. Now you might be thinking there's another way you could break down 12 because isn't two times six also 12? Well, two is prime and if I break down the six into two times three, I get the exact same three numbers, two twos and a three. So this is the prime factorization of 12. The nice thing is it doesn't matter how you break the number down. At the bottom row, if you put the factors in order from least to greatest, you will get the exact same answer. Let's look at one more example. 360. The, the first thing that comes to mind for me is 36 times 10. I know that 36 is 6 times 6. I know that 10 is 2 times 5. So it looks like the 10 is finished because 2 and 5 are both prime. The 2 times 3 gives me 6, and this 2 times 3 gives me 6. I bring down the 2, I bring down the 5, and then if I write them all in order, I've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. Or if I use exponents, 
that would be 2 to the third times 3 to the second times 5.